Welcome to our lesson on probability. We're going to be talking about what probability is and solving some problems using probability or about probability. Basically, we're going to be figuring out um, what are the chances of things happening. So theoretical probability is the likelihood that something will occur. Theoretical probability is um, kind of like a mathematically speaking, what are the chances of something happening? All right, so just from a mathematical standpoint, um, it's just in theory. It, it may not be true. Um, most probability won't be necessarily true, but it's just a mathematical equation, theoretical probability. And this is the way we do it. The favorable outcomes over the total possible outcomes. A um, couple of examples of that. If I have a coin, there are two possible outcomes. So the total possible outcomes would be two. The favorable outcomes, if I want it to be heads, the favorable outcome would be one. So it would be one out of two. All right, would be the probability that it would be heads. All right, the favorable outcome is basically what you want to happen. And the total possible outcomes are, you know, all the different chances. So let's go ahead and look at a question, a couple questions using theoretical probability. If you have a six-sided die, what is the probability that you will roll a three? So what we do, remember, um, the probability of rolling a three, this is the way we write it, the notation, probability of rolling a three. The favorable outcomes is rolling a three. And the total possible outcomes is how many different possibilities are there. So with rolling a die, how many threes are there? Well, there's just one. So the number of favorable outcomes is just one. The total possible outcomes is six, because there's six sides. So that's how we would write the um, the probability of this event happening. The probability of rolling a three is one out of six. Let's look at another example with a six-sided um, die. If you have a six-sided die, what's the probability that you will roll an odd number? So we would set it up the same way, the probability of rolling odd, favorable outcomes over total possible outcomes. And then we would set it up like this. So the number of odd numbers on a six-sided die, there's one, three, and five. So those are the total favorable outcomes. If it's one, three, or five, then it is odd. So there are three different favorable outcomes. The total possible outcomes are still six. So we can write this then as three over six, which reduces down to one half. So there's a one half chance that you will roll an odd number. You can convert this into a percentage or a decimal if you'd like. Um, 50%, one half is 50%. But um, the chances are one out of two, all right, that you will roll an odd number. All right, experimental probability is the other type of probability. So theoretical probability is, in math terms, what are the chances? Um, in experimental probability, you have an actual experiment and you check the probability based on your results. A common question type with that is um, this spinning wheel where they say, you know, you, you flip the, the um, arrow around and it lands on, you know, purple, blue, red, green. It's kind of a weird, I'm going to call this red even though I understand that's not red. Um, but it's kind of close to red. All right, so what is the probability that you'll spin green? We look at, um, this in this experiment, we've rolled three purples, six greens, seven blues, and one time it, it landed on that reddish color. So with the experimental probability, what you're going to do is you're going to first find the total number of rolls. So you would add 3 plus 6 is 9 plus 7 plus 1 will give us 17. All right. So 17 is our total number of rolls. Now we're going to find the probability of green. The probability of green is the total number of green rolls or spins, I guess, green spins over the total number of spins that have happened. So it ends up being 6 over 17, okay? That is our experimental probability. Based on um, the, the spins that we've had and that have happened, the chances are 6 out of 17 that you will spin a green, all right? Your chances of spinning red are very little, you know, 1 out of 17 um, in, according to this table. However, our theoretical probability or our, you know, just mathematically speaking, each side or each part is exactly equal. So there's exactly one-fourth chance of getting any specific color 
or any individual color theoretically. So in theory, you should have an equal chance of getting each number or each color, I'm sorry. But in reality, when we did the experiment, it turned out to not be the same. So that's the difference between experimental probability and theoretical probability. And here's, like I said, a very common question for both types of probability is using a, a sort of a spinning wheel. What's the, the probability of spinning blue, purple, green, red? Um, and then, you know, they give you a table for experimental probability. Or in some cases, you will be given a blank table and you'll get to actually solve it um, using experimental probability. That's a really good exercise to, you know, to learn that the experimental probability and what actually happens is not always exactly the same as the theoretical probability. All right. A um, couple pieces of vocabulary. You may or may not see this. Uh, the, the possible outcomes is sometimes called the sample space or the sample size or just the sample. All right. So when you're talking about probability, you'll, you'll oftentimes hear that, that, that vocabulary word, the sample space. And that means the possible outcomes. It's listed like this in a set. So the sample space um, of rolling a number cube would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's the total possible outcomes. It's not 6. There are 6 possible outcomes. It's the actual outcome possibilities. Okay, that's the sample space. The outcome is a single result that does actually occur, usually in an experimental probability. All right, so you roll a 4. The outcome is 4. Your sample is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. These are all the possible outcomes. This one was the outcome. That's the one that's the actual outcome and the final result. Okay. And when you want to roll an even number, for example, the event, even number, is just a list of possible outcomes that are favorable in this case. So here's a perfect example. If you want to roll an even number, the event is a list of those outcomes. 2, 4, 6. In our example, we did um, odd numbers, 1, 3, 5. Um, if you're spinning and you say, what is the chances that you'll roll, that you'll spin blue or red, then that would be your event would be blue or red, you know, blue and red. They're both favorable outcomes, right? So that is the event. It's just a list of possible outcomes that are favorable to a certain situation. All right, so just three pieces of vocab you may or may not see when you're, when you're dealing with probability. And we're going to do one more probability question, um, a little bit more challenging. What is the theoretical probability that you will draw a red face card from a deck of playing cards, a standard deck of playing cards? So here we go. First, we need to identify how many cards are in a the deck. There are 52 cards in a standard playing deck. All right. So that's going to be the total possible outcomes. How many cards can I possibly pick? 52. All right. Red face cards. Face cards are jack, queen, king. All right. And the red ones are going to be hearts and diamonds. So there's a jack, queen, king of hearts and the jack, queen, king of diamonds. So those are the possible red face cards. So there's six total red face cards. So that means my probability of getting a red face card. Now, I didn't put that in parentheses here because it would have kind of stretched out pretty long, but the probability of getting a red face card is 6 out of 52. We reduce that down to lowest terms and it becomes 3 out of 26. So that is the theoretical probability of drawing a red face card from a deck of standard playing cards. Now, um, talking about a deck of standard playing cards, there are some things that you should know um, when you're going to face probability questions. There's, generally speaking, there are a couple of things that they'll ask about, um, just the types of regular questions. A six-sided cube, they sometimes call it a six-sided cube or a die or dice is the, the plural, but that's just a six-sided cube that you roll and it has, you know, dots or numbers on each side, all right? So a six-sided cube has a total number of six sides, and one different number on each side. A deck of cards. This one here has actually thrown students off because some students don't play with cards. Um, and so knowing all of this is important for probability questions. There's 52 cards in a deck. There are four suits, two black suits, which are called clubs and spades, two red suits, which are hearts and diamonds. 
All right? And there's two colors, black and red. So again, the probability question could be, what is the chances of, get, of drawing a black card from a standard deck of cards? You know, and you have to know how many colors there are, how many cards there are in the standard deck. Also, a standard deck of cards does not include jokers, so it's only going to be talking about those 52 cards. Okay? And the other um, common probability question has to do with coins. Coins have two sides, heads and tails. Um, so if you're flipping a coin over, it's usually going to be you know, one out of two chance. All right. So there are just some standard things, common questions on probability. Hope that lesson's been helpful for you and have an absolutely wonderful day.